It can be a nice surprise. You take a look at your email and there it is, an electronic greeting card. These e-cards, as they're called, are nothing new. Unfortunately, neither are the scams that can go along with them. Although seemingly innocent, this party animal or talking bird somebody, and I cannot say who it was, said that they really liked you. may just be a decoy. Hackers and spammers are sending altered electronic cards from senders identified as, quote, an old classmate or, quote, secret admirer to lure unsuspecting victims. When users click on the link provided, they may get their greeting, but what they're also getting is a virus tearing through the guts of their computer, stealing their identity, money, or both. Symantec Corporation, makers of the popular Norton antivirus software, says these scams are on the rise. In July alone of this year, we've seen over 250 million fake greeting card scams being sent out to consumers. And yet, according to a recent Consumer Reports poll, plenty of online users are leaving themselves wide open for attack. Your chances of becoming a victim of one of these online threats, at least, is still one in four and the total damage we estimate is about $7 billion a year. According to their findings, 1.8 million households have replaced their home computers in the last two years due to virus infections. Jim Stickley is a cyber crime expert with Trace Security and showed us just how easy this scam is. I received a card from a reputable card company and basically I sent it to myself. So what I'm gonna do now is take this e-card, modify it, and I'm gonna resend it out to other people. It's gonna look very legitimate because it's actually their email. I mean, all I'm doing is changing it up. You always strip out anything that's real as far as their name, anything that's actually tying specifically to a person. Once the card is created, Jim adds his own hidden link to a virus. And then it says to use this product, you need to install free software. And that software in turn is going to do malicious things on your computer. Financial institutions like banks and credit unions are likely targets. So I just sent this out about a minute and a half to two minutes ago. This is to an employee of a credit union in the Midwest. Oh, look, we already got somebody. <laughs> we already nailed them. We have success that quick. And there it is right there. There's the contents of the uh, hard drive. I could see if they have anything that they store on their systems. It shows me that I, you know, who the employee is and it shows me the IP address of their network, which means I now have access to log into all their customers' accounts. So I can get social security numbers, account numbers. If I'm having this much success when I'm going after corporations, you know, imagine how easy it is to go after the home user. Oh my gosh. Jim Stickley, good morning. Good morning. You're a little too good at this, you know. <laughs> it's, it's weird. I was watching that and I was reading the information last night. I've gotten a lot of these e-cards. I've opened some of them. Does that mean I'm automatically infected with virus? No, it doesn't mean you're automatically. It depends on if it was legitimate or not. You, they, they play on your ego. We, we all want to be invited to parties. We all want to know that we have a secret admirer. That's how they get you to open these things up. Yeah, I use the secret admirer almost always. And that works so well because you get that and you're like, whoo, someone likes me. You, you got a random employee of one of your client companies to respond to one of those. Did a lot of other people respond during your, your little experiment there? Yeah, we sent out 15 and we got 11 back. It's a pretty good. Huge. That's a pretty good response. So, so does this mean that the average consumer out there, a computer user, should just absolutely avoid these e-cards altogether? I mean, that would put an end to this whole system. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, that would be one solution, but I don't recommend that. I think you can watch for things. When you get an email, watch and see, is it to your name? Is your name somewhere like Dear Jim? Is it from somebody you know? Not just secret admirer, but somebody you actually know. And then is it going to a reputable company? If it's going to like Hallmark.com, Hallmark's pretty reputable. However, however, sometimes, as you said, they, they make it look like it's going to a reputable company. Is there anything that the companies themselves can do to prevent their greeting cards from being turned into scams? Uh, not so far. I mean, it's pretty hard. They're the victim as well. I mean, basically, someone's just pretending to be them, and it's very difficult to stop somebody from doing that. Let's, let's go over advice, because it's most important in these segments to try and give people information they can use. You say, do not open an e-card from an address you do not recognize. Beware of cards that look generic or don't contain your name, which you just talked about, don't install software unless you know the source. That's an important one. So important, so important. I mean, once you're installing something, you're basically giving that application full access to your system. So unless you're absolutely certain that that's, whatever that software is is legitimate, 
don't do it. And keep your antivirus software up to date. You often get notices that say there's an update for that. Take the update. Always, always. I mean, immediately. The minute there's something available, do it. Ho holiday time, a real bad time for this sort of scam? Real bad. Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas, Halloween, any time when you're getting those types of emails going out for these e-cards. Right, and real quickly, Monster.com, there's been a report that, they, that their site was hacked. It's a popular job site and that perhaps some personal information was compromised. What yeah. do you know about that? Yeah, it wasn't the site itself. It was, again, very similar. An email went out to a bunch of people that are using Monster.com, and it convinced them to load software on behalf of Monster, but it wasn't really from them. Jim Stickley. Again, thanks for the information. Sure. I appreciate it.